Today, we're going to talk about BIM quantities that do not suck. And we will be referring to the old rules of measurement in a sort of tongue in cheek way that we've got some new rules of modeling for the old rules of measurement. Quite a stellar team. And we will introduce ourselves. But first of all, just a little backstory on why we're here. I think this has been a bugbear for most of the group of panelists for about 20 years. And it dawned on us that maybe there are a few people working on the same problem. And thankfully, due to connectivity and the internet, the wonderful thing that brings us together, gives us the opportunity to share ideas and through amazing applications, share some solutions to those challenges. And what we've been able to do is pretty, pretty cool. This team has come together to create some really great guidelines that will hopefully be useful for all of you. But it's it's a challenge that our industry continues to go through. And we are by no means completely solving this problem. So we need your help as well. There's a call to action at the end to get involved yourselves. Um, so we'll also put our details in there to get to get you guys involved. But let's kick it off. Sebastian, why don't you start us off on why this journey is so important? Of course, Claire. The Tower of Babel, one of the biggest construction projects ever undertaken, designed to reach the heavens. But the engineers couldn't finish the job. Halfway through, they were all stricken with incapacity of communicating with a fellow man. This episode is supposed to have happened in about 5000 BC. And we've been trying to understand one another ever since. Go on, Laura. I guess that's your turn to tell the rest of the story. Yeah, we, sh we, should, we should add that Sebastian doesn't usually talk like that. So. <laughs> this, is a, this is an old commercial from Autodesk uh, from the 90s. It was about interoperability and no one understanding each other in the AEC industry. And that completely applies to what we're here for today. So go on, Laura, with the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. I'll try to chop that amazing impression, Sebastian, but <laughs> I'll do my best. Well, I want to first invite you guys to imagine a scenario with me based on the story of the Tower of Babel. So imagine that you ask for tender on your project. And so you ask for prices based on your project. And imagine that each one of the companies replied with a budget in a different languages different language. Imagine that you got budgets in Portuguese, English, Chinese, French, Italian. You could translate everything and try to summarize this information, but definitely some, a part of this would get uh, misunderstood or uh, lost during the translation process. Now, to make it even worse, imagine that each one of the companies used different rules to calculate the quantities in your budget. Understanding and summarizing all this information seems like almost an impossible job, right? This is an exaggeration, actually, of a problem that many companies in the industry have to go through today, especially when the measurement rules don't take into consideration the BIM particularities of the project. You can go ahead. So every year, uh, Limson hosts a BMA Plus student. Students, BMA Plus is a master's uh, half in Ljubljana, half in Portugal in Min University. And each year we have one student doing their dissertation with us. This year, Laura decided to accept a topic which is revised or trying to transform the rules of measurement that we use in Portugal, actually, to a BIM workflow. Actually, when we started speaking with Plannerly about that and to create a template that we could reuse on our project, we decided, well, why don't we publish this template and then starting to talk with Ross from Cosmos and Brent from Beck understood that the problem was not only Portugal related, that this could be a much broader uh, topic and that most of the challenges that applied to us also applied to uh, many different companies everywhere in the world. So uh, we decided to do this webinar all together with Plannerly to publish the template that we started creating that then went through a review process with Ross, Brent, Clive and Akos. And this is what we are presenting today. So thank you very much for everyone in this webinar that has prepared everything so far. Absolutely. And the end result that we get is a standard template that you can use. It's set of guidelines. You can freely grab them, take them, do whatever you want with them right now. But what we're asking for is feedback. And all of this incredible work has been published free of charge for teams to use on their project, but also in the hope that they're going to get involved and share some feedback as well. 
they're not only the templates that are available in the docs for methods, but also there are some templates available in the scope to give you an understanding of what elements, what properties, what measurements are needed at each of the different stages in a project as well. So these are what the team has created so that you can have an easier life on your on your projects. Akosh will introduce what our history is, but um, I wish that we had this back in our Vico days when we were preparing hundreds of models for our customers. It would have made our lives a lot easier. So uh, we'll also talk about the research and then we'll show you a demo of exactly what those those templates are and, and how you can go about using them. But let's start with where we started on this journey. And Brent, maybe you can kick us off. Uh, where did this all begin for you and what's important for you and Beck? Sure thing. Yeah, my name is Brent Pilgrim. I'm with the Beck Group. I've been our National Pre-Construction Director and working in model-based estimating the, that world for about 18 years. I'm grateful to be a part of this webinar and this group because as Clive is describing, we've kind of come together fortuitously. Um, I've been working with model-based estimating for about 18 years. It's something that I got passionate about very early in my career. And I struggled with the fact that as we did this process, we just kind of all approached it with an ad hoc strategy. And what I mean by that is we just did whatever we could do with whatever models we were given. And so there was never this a repetitive or replicable strategy that we deployed on projects. So I became fascinated with that and worked on research to really establish an agnostic, so it really doesn't de depend on any particular software, an agnostic process that can be scalable in practice for implementing model-based estimating. And it's called the Integrated Estimating Framework. So you're just seeing a quick screenshot of part of that research. Well, Unbeknownst to me, Laura and I and Limson and Ross and others were doing research simultaneously. The, the fortuitous part is that even though we were coming at this problem from different directions, we were coming to very similar and complementary conclusions. And that's what excited me the most is unbeknownst to each other, we were doing this research and realized as we were brought together by Clive and this effort that we're actually complementing this process. So the integrated estimating framework really lays down some foundational concepts. And what Lemson and the team have done is built workflows that can be implemented on top of those concepts. I mentioned I'm with Beck. Beck's a 112-year-old construction company. Early in the 90s, we integrated with a design team. We've been innovating in this space around model-based estimating and technology for over 25 years, and I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Clive. Really appreciate it. The key there is everyone's been doing this in silos and then the opportunity to come together and realize we're actually solving it in the same way that was what was pretty special to see yeah, yeah. thanks ross tell us more yes tell us more so why are we here i guess or why am i here uh, i'm a founder of cosmos we're a digital cost and carbon quantity surveying consultancy so for all your quantity surveyor cost managers out there listening in we come from a very specific training background when it comes to quantification and uh, the introduction of BIM over the last 20 odd years is is changing how we approach projects now, how we collaborate and communicate and more importantly, how we manage information. So I know the guys in Limson now quite a few years. So with this conversation was was super interesting. So we came in to review it from a quantity severe cost manager's perspective. If you're from the UK or familiar at all with uh, the new rules of measurement NRM in the UK, you'll, you'll know that they're quite detailed in granularity in terms of their requirements for quantification and how we measure. Likewise, in Ireland, where I'm from, the agreed rules of measurement is quite similar. But for the QSs and cost managers out there, this is the beginning of something really. It's not the end product yet. So if, when you begin to look at it and challenge it in relation to these methods of measurements, just remember that it's the beginning of the digitization of this very, very old process from our perspective. So who is Cosmos? We're a, we're a specialist digital cost carbon consultant. We've been working with model-based quantities for about a decade now, our, our team. But we were founded in 2019 in, in, in Copenhagen in Denmark. And Denmark has been using BIM and kind of BIM development for about uh, 18 years now. First mandate was in 07, approximately. So quite well developed there it is, I must say. We have offices in Copenhagen, Dublin and Limerick in Ireland. We only work on BIM projects, which is key for us as, as cost consultants and quantity surveyors. Um, and we only work with model-based quantities, which is why this is uh, super interesting to visualize the process for the other stakeholders. Because we have to remember here is that 
the architects and engineers are the key stakeholder group that designed these elements for us as cost managers and quantity surveyors. We only process the information they produced. But we need to process that information in a certain way because our output is dictated by the standards that we work with within our industry. And this is where this visual communication aspect becomes super important on our BIM projects and helps us with the communication between the, with the other stakeholders. And finally, we specialize in pre-construction so that early engagement, involvement in the design phase of the projects, helping design teams to design to budget as well as design to standards like this. So it's uh, super exciting for sure. And I'm delighted to be here. Thanks, everyone. And that's a great point, Ross. BIM is both a benefit, but also a challenge. We get the opportunity for streamlining that workflow. Yeah. We have efficiencies. Yeah, we, we have to fit it in the existing rule set and yeah. we will need to define a model in a way that is going to be streamlining. Yeah. Just to comment on that, what we have is from our profession is we have a very old, archaic way of working that is paper based, if you like. The industry is transitioning into this digital design, VDC, if you like, uh, virtual design and construction. And we as cost managers and quantity surveyors are going with our paper based methods of measurement going. How do we deal with this? I can, we can only measure and quantify in 2D. That we can't deal with the, with the models. So we need tools like this to help us to communicate our needs with the design team. So this communication tool becomes very important to translate this method of measurement into a digital form so that it can be followed while designing digitally. Great. Yep. And then the Limson team, tell us more. Yeah, thank you, Clive. Me and Sebastian, five years ago, more or less, the, the founding partners of Limson, the real reason for us to be here is that at some point, working as architects, we're really struggling with the quantifications process. So the the average outcome of any project would be a lousy uh, string of mistakes and things not exactly matching. And we were a bit tired of having that as a way of living. And the majority of the reason for us to shift into BIM was exactly to make this process make sense in the end. And it's funny because... Also, the reason for us being here today and discuss the rules of measurement, it's exactly that reason. So I could say we started the Limson as a byproduct of being picky people about quantifications. We were really happy to have on board more than one year ago, I think, uh, Laura, which was in a very happy way, an extension of what we were trying to achieve. So we put her effort into very good results. This is a, a very high level overview of the company. We are working as information managers on the developer side, on the owner side. We were founded five years ago. We cover the planning phase, the design phase, which sometimes can get quite bumpy. We also manage the process during the construction and uh, the transition to the operations of those uh, assets that we are dealing and managing. So we started as two people, uh, me and Sebastian, we've expanded the team, probably we'll duplicate our headcount this year. And we particularly like this picture because, of course, that's us in the picture, <laughs> that's obvious. But the sturdiness of the massive steel structure that you see is basically an image for us, for the way that we are trying to, to build this company, which is a company built to last. And one final reason to explain why we're here with Plannerly as well, I would say roughly four years ago, we came across Plannerly. We chatted with those very special guys that are hosting this webinar. And for us as a company, for the work that we do, it was a big difference for us on all of the operations that we have to use Plannerly for the majority of our tasks. So it's a very promising endeavor for the future. It has been so far. So Clive, back, back to you, I think. I love the picture and you guys are going to need a, yeah. a long staircase, a taller staircase. Mm -hmm. New staircase for the next uh, webinar, for sure. Akos, share a brief intro for us and then we'll get into the meat of this presentation. I will try to keep it brief. So quantities, model-based quantities have always been close to our hearts, which is which might sound weird a little bit because Clive, you are a civil engineer, myself, I'm an architect, but we met actually back in 2005-ish. Uh, we were part of the core team of Vico Software. Vico was a beautiful piece of tool doing probably the first integrated model-based cost estimation and project scheduling. But because we are talking about 2005, there were no good models. So we had to help our, our customers all around the world putting together models for them to be able to use the model-based processes and downstream process steps. So that's how we learned actually what differentiates a project success from a failure, how to do modeling, how to do proper modeling for quantities. 
And 15 years later, that's what turned it into Planoly. We wanted to create an, an online platform that simplifies all this kind of mess that we have uh, in the topic of building information modeling, simplify and make it achievable, accessible for everyone for doing efficient uh, project planning to make sure that each and every project stakeholder are on the same page. And if you have a certain use case, like in our example today, if you want to do modeling for cost estimating or quantity takeoff, so you can request and have all the necessary pieces of information at hand to do your actual work. Uh, Planoly is around seven years old now, I guess. And as you can see the numbers, you can hopefully get it in your own language in over 100, 140 countries uh, around the world. If you wanted to hear more about us, just go to planoly.com check our resources tab. So ISO 19650 being a huge topic. And um, of course, um, we are fully aligned and, and supporting the implementation of the standard. We even have templates if ISO 19650 was new to your company to get started, but also any topics in our BIM blogs when it comes to building smart ideas, building smart data dictionary, and basic BIM topics as well. So please just visit this website. Great. Thank you. What a team. Okay, so we've blown our own trumpets. Let's talk about the details on this. But it is important to know that we care about this problem. This is an issue that has been annoying us for a long time. So that's why it's such a special thing to get these teams together to make it a, a start of a solution. But where did this start from a, a research perspective? Laura, can you shed some light on the steps that you went through from a research perspective? Yes, let's jump into it, Clive. Thank you, everyone. So just to give you some context of why I'm here, my name is Laura Almeida, and last year I got my master's degree in BIM with BIM A+. BIM A+, is actually a consortium of University of Ljubljana and University of Minho, which partners up with many international companies, such as Limson. In my case, my thesis was developed with this partnership, so BIM A+, uh, and Plannerly. The initial spark for this research came from the gap between the quantity takeoff practices using BIM and the rules of measurement in Portugal. An important side note here is that Portugal doesn't actually have official rules of measurement. However, the industry here leans on the guidelines from LINEC, which is a national research institution here from Portugal. However, these differences aren't just about industry practices using different units and different methods. It's also about the software not quite syncing up with the local rules. And that forces companies to come up with their own workarounds which makes the standardization of the industry even trickier. Here, in order to do that, we interviewed 15 companies from the industry uh, in order to understand the actual challenges that they went through and how they address these challenges. Here is an overview of these companies. So on the left, we have the expertises of them from designers, contractors, site management, and beam management companies. And as well, on the right chart, you can see the disciplines that they covered, which is a good range. These Interviews were divided into two main topics. So starting on the left, the general topics, we assessed the usage of software to author and extract quantities. So which software did they use? We also analyzed the bill of quantity structure. So if they followed any specific rule of measurement or any specific WBS classification code, what did they use to structure the bill of quantities? She froze. Oh, she just froze there. There's two of you now, Laura. This... <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm everywhere. Sorry, my computer. But coming back no to the the topics, we were assessing the bill of quantity structure and also the methods that the companies employ to link the models with the bill of quantity structure itself. If it's with codes or Excel or Power BI, what did they use? And also, apart from the general topics, we assess the discipline specific ones. So each one of the disciplines have their specificity uh, of quantifying each one of them. So we also analyze how did they quantify their disciplines themselves. I just add there, Laura, that it's th the disciplines also have a different way of modeling as well in terms of that information. So it's important to understand that as well. Exactly. To start about the findings, what we found out about this research. In plumbing, for example, we uh, identified that there are three different methods that the company employ to quantify their plumbing systems. So starting with the one on the left, the pipes and fittings were being quantified by length. So all of the fittings, they had to report a specific length in order to sum with the length of the piping. So that would require model edits as well. And the one on the left, it's pipe being quantified by length and fittings quantified by a ratio applied to the length of the pipes in order to calculate uh, how much the fittings would matter into the entire length of the network. 
In that case, this ratio was varying from 10 to 30%. That would depend uh, on the plumbing system that was being quantified. The last one is pipes by length and fittings by units, which is what the closest thing the authoring software understands. So we had these three different methods employed in different project phases and according to specific information that was available at the moment. Concrete. For concrete, we didn't find different units. We found different geometries considerations. So on the left, you can see that the geometry that was generated by default by the authoring software that was mostly used by the companies. And on the right, the requested geometry for the guidelines. So as you can see, they are quite different between the columns, slabs, beams, and walls. And there were many methods that the company used in order to transform what's on the left to what's on the right. For HVAC, we discovered that the ducts and the fittings were being quantified differently based on their shape. On the left, we have the rectangular ducts were quantified by surface area, the area uh, of the steel plates that would make the ducts. And on the right, we have the round ducts and fittings that were being quantified by length and by count of fittings. After summarizing all of this research, we combined a pick list of model best practices and the quantification methods to comply the model with the measurement guidelines. So as I show you, we had the options and the idea here was to present the options so you could choose the ones that you want for your specific project. To make this pick list available to everyone, we thought about creating a template on Plannerly, just like it was done for Kobe a while ago. Clive and Akos connected us with Cosmos and Backgroup. And after showing these findings with them, we came to the conclusion that many of the issues and the methods that were employed to bridge them are experienced by many professionals out there. Of course, it can vary a little from country to country, but the core issue was basically the same. So let's get into the demo. All right. If you go to the template list on Plannerly and add the measured methods of measurement, you will see that we are starting with some general notes regarding model organization and identification parameters. Also, model uh, organization according to cost. Of course, you can edit as much as you want and then share it, including it into your BP structure. After that, we have the discipline-specific guidelines that we created. So reinforcement, steel, architecture, plumbing systems. As we said, it is a pick list. So we have here three different methods of piping, as I mentioned. And as we open them, there is a text for what it is. The image that I just showed you guys, so here we have the three of them outlined, and you can edit and choose the ones that you want for your project. So if you don't want to quantify by length and units, you can just delete them. And of course, they vary according to your project specifics and share them on your BEP. Also, we created a template for the scope. So if you access the scope tab on your new project, and add from the template library, from Plannerly template, you'll find the English methods of measurement. Then from the template, you can add the chapters and the elements that you, you need. In that case, we organize this as the uniclass structure, but it can definitely be custom according to the structure of your classification system. If you expand, you're going to find foundations, reinforcement, piles and columns, other elements for structure metal stairs, walls, windows, doors, ceilings, etc. Each one of these elements is detailed by project phase. So as you see, concept, coordination, and technical phases. And those elements in pink, as you see there, they are parameters and quantification units to be exported from these models. So in that case, we are suggesting reinforcement volume ratio for foundations, volume, and also a project or a specific material object code. That code would link the model itself with the bill of quantity. That could be a WBS, a classification code, whatever you want. As you can see there, you can choose the, the parameters and the quantification units according to the project phase and personalize that as much as you want. So, for example, if you don't want the reinforcement ratio in a specific phase uh, and the concept one, and instead of that, start modeling that on coordination and technical, you can. Also, you can just delete the ones that are not going to be modeled at that specific phase. So in that case, reinforcement, we might imagine that we're not going to model a reinforcement, which is the case in most projects. And then we're going to use the reinforcement ratio instead applied to the concrete structure in order to quantify the reinforcement based on the modeled elements. Then you can just personalize that 
according to your project. Okay, and we also have other quantification units to specific model elements. So for example, piles and columns, we have the count by type, we have the length, concrete volume, and that will, as I said, it is a draft. So we have covered the most of the elements that we assessed during my thesis, but mm -hmm. we understand that there is a lot of room to include more elements and include different project phases as well, maybe add uh, facility management operations and try to build together. So just just a comment there. So on, on that, Laura, for all your the QSs and cost managers out there, you're, you're thinking to yourselves, but hang on a second. My method of measurement tells me I need to measure concrete per cubic meter for the different concrete strength type. I need to measure formwork per square meter, per linear meter, et cetera, et cetera. And those methods of measurements do go into quite a lot of detail, but we don't model in that way. So we need now to transition our methods of measurements to focus more on how we model and how we derive certain quantities from the modeled information, like the columns, the foundations, et cetera. So what we can see over the next number of years is that the RICS needs to now alter the, method, the new rules of measurement in order to comply with how we model our items. So what we're saying here is we can get components from the models as and the level of information relating to each component is going to be as follows. And from that, we can derive the quantities needed within our traditional methods of measurement. Very cool. And this is the principle is that the one to one relationship is what's plagued our industry forever mm -hmm. between whether it's classification structures or when you're working with a different language. As we started off with the Tower of Babel, it's so difficult to communicate with other people. So having a way to agree on how you're going to communicate this very complex structure of a building before you actually go and build it and before you measure it and before you get down that road is incredibly important. So I think that this is the starting point of instead of everyone solving this on their own and thinking maybe it could be solved in this way, what we've been able to do is see that many people are solving it in almost the same way gather their thoughts together and have not just industry, but academia and also cost management and the software side of things, all of those perspectives come together and agree that this is a great starting point. And now we're opening it up to the rest of the industry. There will be another slide with our email addresses for you to be able to connect with us individually. The guideline is now freely available inside of Planoly as well. You can grab the how-to parts and the pick lists inside of the docs module. And then inside of the scope, you can grab the, the scope from that methods of measurement. Please, please, please tell us what we can do better as a team and get involved. Tell us where you can help. And we're really looking forward to expanding the use of this across the world. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys.